Hello everyone and welcome back to Make Your Mind. This is, I guess you could call it a sculpture showcase, but this is also more of a sort of, I guess you'd call it a brainstorming or like a conceptual idea. I'm, I'm always coming up with ideas and I'm always uh, trying to come up with new things that may sound cool. And, and if you do enjoy uh, these kind of things, go ahead and leave a like and also leave a comment. If you think some of these are good ideas, if you think some of these might be kind of kind of crazy, but uh, I don't know. I'm always thinking of ideas like this, so uh, let's begin. I've been doing a lot of showcases about Subnautica. Let me just show off my little peeper that I made. <laughs> I love this little guy. I mean, he's because I mean the peeper has basically become synonymous with the game, and. Uh, but this video is not necessarily about the peeper, but I will talk about that in a minute. I had an idea, and whether this could be put into the game or not, I truly don't care. I just, I'm just, sh I'm just showing my ideas. I had an idea for a new biome, and it would be sort of based in reality, but it would, uh, but it would add something new and yet something familiar to the game. Essentially, the idea I had was sort of like this. I started out with this simple drawing. I had right here, this is would be considered the crater's edge, where you would look off and then it would drop down into nothingness. But as you can see, I have a couple of organisms that actually live along the rock face. There's a couple of rock grubs and these things that I drew and then this big sort of jellyfish thing and this fish and then this what looks a little bit like a peeper. But I had an idea of sort of, imagine, imagine if you will, like if it was the deep ocean where all of the sort of food scraps and, and carcasses that come off the crater, that fall down off the crater's edge, imagine if they got caught by these organisms and they survived off of the sort of scraps of sort of organisms that have either perished or, or were also eaten, um, that were actually living along the actual crater. And the crater is the sort of the full biosphere of the original game of Subnautica. And I just came up with this concept drawing just on some sticky notes. And then I said to myself, you know what? What would that look like if I decided to make your mind? If I decided to make my mind? So, here was a couple of ideas I had. This was the first idea. It looks like this fish down here. This is the crater's edge eye eye. Which, this is a creature that I haven't made the normal version of yet. But imagine th the regular eye eye, but with this sort of longer extended tail. And it would have a bigger eye. And it would basically be swimming around, sort of spinning around. And it would basically be collecting food scraps that would be just floating around in the water. That's the kind of idea that I had. And then I also, just like these pictures here and here, I had the idea of the Crater's Edge Rock Grub. Now, just to give you an idea of how big this rock grub would actually be, let's see, where did I put it? Oh, I put it, there it is. Imagine if, imagine if this is the size of a regular rock grub, and then this would be the size of the one off the crater's edge. Be a much bigger version of this organism, and this is based on a phenomena that actually happens here on planet Earth that is known as abyssal gigantism, where you have regular creatures, like if you're ever curious, look up a picture of a giant isopod. If you don't know what an isopod is, an isopod is a little bug creature that everyone knows as a roly-poly. But in the deep depths of the ocean, there's a version of the roly-poly that is, that is bigger than a football. And if you don't know that, look it up for yourself. It's called the Giant Isopod. And apparently in some countries, it's actually considered a rare delicacy. But there was the, the I guess you could call it the Abyssal Rock Grub or the Crater's Edge Rock Grub. Now the Crater's Edge would be different from the Void, as you can see. The Void would be more sort of out here. So you would see the creatures living along the Crater's Edge. And then eventually when you swam out far enough, there would literally be nothing. And then that's when you would get attacked by, let's say, the ghost leviathans, or even the up-and-coming gargantuan leviathan. But along the edge, and along the drop-off, I guess you could call it, there would be some creatures that would be 
evolved versions of creatures that you would see in the safe shallows or even creatures that you've never seen before. And one of those creatures that I made, and this one I actually decided to make in full color just to see what it would look like. I think it looks pretty cool. So let's say you got your regular peeper that floats around in the shallows, just like this. Now here would be the version that lives near the crater's edge or off the crater's edge. It would look like this. Imagine that. So you have something that is much bigger than a peeper. It has a bigger eye. It has a slightly modified body. It's a little bit more evolved. And one of the th ideas I had is that this has actually now become a filter feeder. It has the beak here that's been modified to stay open and has these almost beak-like channels that help to gather water into its mouth. It then filters the food items out of it and then shoots that water out of these jets. And then they get guided, the jets get guided with these fins so that it's able to use as little energy as possible by sucking in water. And then these fins help to maneuver it through the water. And it would be a much bigger creature and it would have this larger eye. As you see, it's got the red with the green on the inside. So it would be a creature that would be able to see in total darkness. Kind of like creatures do in, in, the, in the actual world, like they do here on planet Earth. But in this case, it would be more sort of a comparison between Earth and 4546B. Now, you probably noticed... Let me move these slightly out of the way. You hang out over here for a minute. Actually, here, you go over here. Bring this over here. You probably saw in the picture, you saw these weird creatures, and then you saw this big thing. Well, I made those too. And these actually creatures would be related to each other. Here was the first one. This, I guess you could call this the... I guess you could call this the the cliff... I guess they call it the cliff... The cliff snare, I guess you could call it. I don't. I haven't really come up with a name for it. But this is a creature that attaches to the cliff face, and it has these tentacles that pop out almost like a coral or almost like a jellyfish. And they have these sticking cells that stick. And it would be almost like if you've ever seen, if you know what a sundew plant is, it's actually a carnivorous plant. Imagine a, a creature, if, if a body or if another creature comes down, it then attaches these tentacles and then the tentacles simply roll up. They roll up and they sort of encase the creature and then it slowly digests it over time. That's kind of the idea of what these were. And at the end of these little tentacles are these little these little balls here. These are these are gas-filled bubbles that actually help to make the tentacles. They can be much longer than this, but they would allow it to stay buoyant in the water, and they would be facing more upwards, so that if anything were to roll off the cliff face, it would get ensnared in these tentacles and then slowly be digested over time. That was just one of the ideas. Now imagine this creature gets mature enough. It then grows and grows and eventually pops off the face of the the face of the cliff and now lives as a part of the void, or I guess part of the crater's edge, and it becomes an adult and would look like this. So imagine you're swimming through the water and you see this eyeball and it has these four fins that swim parallel to each other. So you got two that go up and two that go down, two that go up and two that go down. And then behind it are these long tentacles. As you can see, each one of these has the little, the little gas-filled bladder on the, on the end. So that it helps to keep it buoyant. And it would just be dragging these along. And then whatever sort of food scraps or any creatures that made the wrong turn, they would in fact get snared and then eventually rolled up. And then they would drag along its body and then be consumed slowly over time. Look at that. So this, I got this idea, sort of a mix from a sort of Portuguese man-of-war, but almost like a box jellyfish, because box jellyfish uh, that live in Australia, they're jellyfish that can actually swim against the current, and that's kind of the idea I had. And then with that eyeball in the middle there, that almost looks a lot like the actual jellyfish from Below Zero. So that's where I kind of got these conceptual ideas. Let's see here, let me spread out the tentacles real quick, so... Each tentacle, the main tentacle would have the, the bubble, or the sort of bladder, I guess, and then the subsequent tentacles that broke off of it would sort of hang down, so that way it can cover all the bases. So that's the kind of idea that I actually got, and this is some of the many conceptual ideas that I have, but I wanted to 
I wanted to share this one with you because I don't know. I think this one, I think this one would be kind of cool. But I know that the original Subnautica game, it's been around for a long time, and if they wanted to do it, if Unknown Worlds wanted to do it, they could. But it's all good. This is just the kind of idea I had. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. It'd be interesting to see what you guys think of this. And also, leave a comment if you want to see me make these creatures in full color. I can come up with some conceptual ideas and make some full color ideas for these creatures, because I'm, I'm very much... One of my main idols in my life, especially when it comes to clay, is Stan Winston. Stan Winston is one of the greatest creature designers in all of movie history. He designed... He designed. He helped to design the Predator. He designed all the all the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. He designed the Alien Queen. He did just some truly iconic movies. He did the Terminator, the T eight hundred. There were so many different creatures that he did, and uh, I just I, I I have that sort of conceptual same idea, kind of like what he does. And I just I love the designs, especially from Unknown Worlds and. And even from the guys at Space Cat Creations who are doing their Gargantuan Leviathan, their conceptual ideas, especially for their, for the other mod that they did was for the, the, I guess the Return of the Past. I can't remember the exact name of the mod off the top of my head, but uh, I've just been rolling with these ideas. And if you want to see me do some of those creatures as well, like creatures like the Gulper Eel, the, uh, what's the other one? The Twist Eel. And also things like the, the, the Thalassation, whether you get the Jasper or the Stellar, and a couple of the other creatures like, like the Twist Jelly and a couple of other ones. I can do those too, so go ahead and leave a comment down below. And uh, remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss the next video. I've always have, I always have concept ideas like this, so I love to translate them and, uh, and share them with you on this channel. So with that, thank you very much for watching. This was a brainstorming concept idea. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. And I will see you on the next one.